All right, next. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem Game coming next year. Uh, the animated film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has garnered critical acclaim since its release in theaters last month. As fans know, the best way to follow up a good TMNT project is to make a video game out of it, and that's exactly what ha what's happening next year. Publisher Out Outwhite Games, along with Paramount and Nickelodeon, have announced a new untitled TMNT game in development set within the Mutant Mayhem universe. It will feature the same striking visual design and follows a new story set months after the movie's events. There's no word yet on if the film's um, ensemble's cast will reprise their roles. In terms of gameplay, a press release only hints that uh, the project involves combining energetic ninja teamwork gameplay with a humorous narrative. Uh, players will take control of the turtles as they interact with a host of memorable characters from the franchise and fight to save the stylized take on New York City from a new mutant threat. Outwhite Games has experience working on, ga on games based on kid-friendly licenses, making titles based on Star Trek Prodigy, How to Train Your Dragon, Paw Patrol, and Peppa Pig. The M TMNT Mutant Mayhem game is targeting PC and consoles. It's the latest project in what's been quite a renaissance for the Turtles, especially in video games. The resurgence kicked off with last year's well-received TMNT Shredder's Revenge, which recently got a big new expansion. The Cowabunga Collection bundled every classic TMNT game into one package for a modern audience. A single-player action game based on the beloved TMNT The Last Ronin graphic novel is also in the work. So, are you excited for this new uh, game based off its latest movie, movie, Mutant Mayhem? I've always wanted to see uh, the TMNT movie from last, last month and all. It came out in uh, early August. Unfortunately, I don't have the money for it right the second to see it. Um, it's just that it's not the same Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles we saw when we were kids. Triple J. It was very different. I, I see the trailer on. I was like, that's April? The newest April? Like, God damn, that's, they fucked up. <laughs> is, she, is, she, is she 10 years old, like in the cartoon? Yeah, like a 10 year old black girl. I'm like, is, or a pre teen oh, girl. God. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Whatever happened to the, uh, the 21, 25 year old April and the. Uh, Jumpsuit, the yellow jumpsuit, and she's a TV reporter and all. And whatever yeah. happened to that 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 origination of the of the story and character? Like that's it's, it's a, they try to they try to ruin it or try to appeal to the modern audiences. I hear. I'm like, yeah, I said, they, they, modern they, audiences, but the old audiences are. Well, they they're, 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 try, they're trying to appeal to a niche niche audience, which they think will will. Um, which will help them, which it won't. The newest generation. It's going to do more. They try to appeal to. It's going to do more harm. It's going to do more harm than good, basically. Well, if, if it's going, if it's making sales as of this moment in theaters and, and still in theaters, I mean, that's a problem. Surprise me, and I'm like, wow, because uh, yes, the kids will watch it eventually. Obviously, they're going to be thinking of that April, not about our April, you know, Triple J. So it's like, you know, they're going to be thinking like the the black transgender or the black. You know, it's lesbian April, not and not the hot, you know, light skin April. You know, with the with the red hair and all. You know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I didn't know this game had a little bit of so. I didn't know this had a little bit of social justice in it. So that just killed it for me. It, um, it's okay to have the, the the change and all. Just that is that consistent. It, it, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's it's not. It's not serving any purpose other than pandering. To a few people at best on Twitter. Yeah, right. to, a, to a niche audience. It's playing like you're pandering to the mainstream. You're pandering to a niche uh, crowd that's not going to support you either way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this is so hard for companies to get through their thick head. You appeal to the mainstream. You you know you have a history with you know you have a character that has a history. You don't piss on the history. You keep that history going. I bet it's the big. I bet, uh, I bet the current day um, um, makers of of the Star Wars trilogy from, from Cal Ren and all they're the ones behind fucking the TMNT movie. I'm like what the hell, right? <laughs> yeah. So again, um, I was interested how this game was going to work, but yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm sticking. I'm sticking with the old. You know, I'm. I I don't. I did play Shredder's Revenge with Doctor Games One Hundred One uh, yeah. co cooperatively. Yeah. Last year. Um, I still haven't gotten the Cowabunga collection, but you know what? If I do get the Cowabunga collection, I'll stick with that. 
Yeah, um, let's stick with the the the, the Shredder's Revenge and Carol Bugger Collection. That's about it. Everything yeah. after the after those games is kind of like you know, let's see the, the trailer and see how bad it is. That's about it. <laughs> but like, but it's the year twenty twenty three Triple J. We have to understand kids are different. You know, it's about multiculturalism. It's about unity and yeah. mixing the cultures together. You know. You gotta have that that mixture of culture, you know. We can't we can't have the the ideal woman anymore, you know. It's just over with. Do you That's really so want? Do you really want my response to that? Oh yeah, go ahead. Why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm this is this is where I do take a stand. You know, you, I've, all, I've always I've always we, we talked about this with the Little Mermaid list when that movie was coming out, and look where look look and look where where that movie ended up. It's probably at the bottom of bargain bins as we speak. Um, it's not plus right you want to create a new months. you want to create a new character, or you, and you still want to uh, hand off the success of a previous previous character. Fine, just create a new character. Why can't it be April's friend or April's daughter or April's adopted daughter? Niece or, 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 <laughs> yeah, or adopted or something. I mean, why why do they have to make why? I mean, what is April going to be a rainbow colored Eskimo ne in the next game? <laughs> That's good for Rainbow Color. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's coming to that point now. It's like, yes, we were taught in high school. No, actually, in elementary school, where I come from, the multiculturalism, so like, you know, we had a class, like I told last 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 episodes or so, where it's about the each class had our own, like, country theme. Like, one class has France to talk about, the other, the other class has, like, uh, um, uh, what's it, Egypt and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, you know, they're trying to teach us young to. Accept each other's, you know, differences. And that's what they're trying to do right it's now in this world, you know. But it's different between accepting and changing. I mean, they're not saying. I mean, they're not saying. Okay, uh, the French culture is the way America's going to live. So forget everything that's American, unless it's also French. <laughs> no, and they're not. And then and they're not doing that for uh, to uh, for other countries either. And that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, you know, it's you know, leave the history alone. And create new things. If you can't create new things, maybe you shouldn't be in that in that. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be in that business anymore. Yeah, whoever these makers are, these movies for the past almost ten years now. I have to say, they've really are uh, doing some cultural Marxism yeah. bullshit now. I mean, yes, it's been a thing for how many decades? As Geo Griffith talked about in the sixties and all, but this is going to be too obvious, like way obvious. And yes, we have across yeah. this creek in seventh seventh heaven TV shows back in the nineties and two thousands. But that was more of a wholesome, like, you know, home, homage. Like, it's about the American dream and the family. And that it also got to talk about Roswell with the aliens and all that stuff. Like, it wasn't all over-exaggerated. It was the ideal, mainstream, uh, mainline type of, like, content to give to people on TV. But thanks to the internet, now it's like they had to compete for those, you know, for that certain audiences, whoever they are. You know, it's... We're gonna try to appeal to every single video towards Twitter on, on Twitter for these Twitter followers or users. I'm like, they don't even have money for the pay the tickets. I'm like, well, why even bother appealing to these type of audiences? Yeah. You know, I, I I just had a scary thought. I mean, uh, do you remember the show Baywatch during the '90s? Oh yeah, I watched a panel episode. Yeah, could you imagine if they remade that for the Twitter audience in 2023? Uh, they did have a Baywatch movie with Dwayne the Rock Johnson about five years ago, or so. It was all right. Yeah, but well, I didn't even know about that one. But yeah, you got to I'm saying, can you imagine them making a TV series? What would the lifeguard? Would the female lifeguards be 300, 400 pounds each? Would uh, uh, would would uh, what, 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 could you? I, I, I just imagine how much of a train wreck it. And it's going to be a train wreck regardless what you try to remake if you're pandering that niche crowd. And we try to put I mean, in, that's off in there. That's just going to be a nostalgic thing. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, but the thing is, you know, just, I, I, again, we never, we haven't talked about The Little Mermaid since uh, the trailer came out. And, you know, we talked about it that one time and it's gone. What, where is it now? You know, yeah. was it was so great. And it was so great to bring for other races to be represented. Where is it now? And that's going to be the fate of anything else that does this pandering niche, pandering to a niche crowd bullshit. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Now, now if they're gonna, they gonna pay for that, that 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 movie ticket, these Twitter follow the users, oh. or perhaps they're gonna stream it on Disney Plus, which they are doing a little murmuring promo now on on Disney Plus, where if you like rent for three months, we get three months of uh, for dollar ninety nine a month for three months with a little mermaid added to at the library now. It's like, you know, it's a it's a pandering thing to but in the end they're not gonna watch the little mermaid, most of these uh Twitter users, whoever these fuck screwed up ones. Yeah, even though even though they even though they stand up for it, they're not gonna watch it. They only have two dollars to, to pay for it three months, whatever it is. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, they would have to tell their cell phone to buy that subscription, so I don't understand. I don't understand who are these people. Not J.K. Rowling, but like the ones who are like the uh, the ones who were behind Star Wars for the last ten years with the uh, yeah. with, with the episode eight and all. Like episode eight was all right to watch in theater, but the, the, to the average Star Wars fan of the from the nineteen nineties and all, like as us, pretty much we're gonna look at that as like a baffling, fucked up experience. You know, it's like a you know, it's like whatever to the audience, general audiences, but it's just to us fans who. Grew up with the Star Wars Luke Skywalker, and all. it's kind of like a blow to the uh, the franchise, and also, and they're doing it with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're doing it with well, what, what other franchise out there? James Bond. They're doing it with uh, other franchises like Lord of the Rings. I'm like, eh, what's, what's going to end? You know, it's, they're going to ruin either ruin everything or try to revamp the the culture somehow so it's to fit into their own little world, which they're looking at from important, important terms, you know. I'll bring up I'll bring up uh, Lord of Patriarchy again on YouTube. Okay. Um, formerly Warcorp six six six. He yep. said, "Imagine if they tried to recreate Seinfeld in twenty twenty three. He said, Jer- "Jerry would in his own show would be completely useless. Elaine would be a strong woman who doesn't need a man in her life." Um, I forgot what he said. Kramer and George would be, but it- it's true. It's I mean. And the sooner these executives uh, wake up, the the much better entertainment will be. Already a new a new people altogether for what from the who are in their thirties or forties like us. Like we're not we're not too yeah. old. We're definitely not too young. So we have to take charge now because the new the, the current movie industry, TV industry, politics, uh, the 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 the, uh, the laws, the law firms, the law. Systems, they've all been run by baby boomers for the last 25, at least 25 years now. And yes, they're still in charge somehow, some way, but they're losing their touch on what's relevant in today's world. So if we could bring in some 30, 40 year old, you know, gamers, 30, 40 year old movie watchers, 30, 40 year old, you know, TV, you know, um, skit, skit makers on YouTube, whatever, like the Onisians, like the Tobuscus, like the, 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 the PewDiePie's, and even us regular people, like, not regular, regular but, but you get, like, we've been on the internet on YouTube for how many years, Triple J, and it's like, you know, we know what's up, you know? We have an idea, so give us the chance to take part in that creation, you know? Yes, we can make our own movies somehow, so we can make our own skits and stuff like that, but that requires money, and also promotions beyond belief. And it's like you need like people together for that. And it's all about oh, yeah. that uh, sacrifice and, and hard workmanship to make make it happen. But in today's world, well, with, the screenwriters, I, so. with the screenwriters guild and the screen actors guild on strike, uh, last time I checked, I mean now would be would be the best time if if you don't have the money, maybe you could get it crowdfunded because T V stations are looking for new content, you know? Yeah. That's actually what's helped professional wrestling recently is with the Screen Actors Guild and the Screen Writers Guild on strike. There's no new scripted uh, shows coming out, and TV sh- networks need new co- new shows, so they turn to professional wrestling because professional wrestling doesn't take uh, you know it's op- it's it's operating 52 weeks a year, so therefore it's um, so therefore. Um, you know, networks are more open to professional wrestling if the, even if they weren't in the past because the, all networks need new content. Mm-hmm. Um, ready to move on? Or I just want to say one more thing about the TMNT movie that came out last month. I will still watch okay. it if it's still in theater sometime next month or later at the end of this month or whatever, if I ever have extra money by any chance. 
but it's just that you know I'm not gonna look at it and like, look at the scene like it once was when I was a kid because they try to appeal, like I said they try to appeal towards the younger audiences now or try to change the younger audiences uh, perspective on what what beauty is and that's that's, that's a true statement like the the, the the beauty is in the eye of the beholder so you know if they're trying to change the world somehow something to these kids and good good or bad you know it's it is what it is that's how it is because so back when when other movies came out other franchises came out for the tv and, and anime and animation uh and movies and stuff for animation and stuff like the the eighth man of the 1960s astro boy 1960s and the Flintstones in 1960s so this there's our parents generation looking at this stuff too it looked so it was mainly like like a entertainment in their eyes too and it kept was kept consistent yeah. for a couple of Three or four decades up until nineteen nineties, two thousands. But I twenty tens is like, what the hell? So hopefully, hopefully, when we see the movie, if you want to see the movie, that is uh, yourself, Triple J, that uh, you know, it, it still looks good. I'm not doing it. And I, but it looks like, like I said, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I'm not going to tarnish my memories of what Ninja Turtles was when I was a kid. So surprisingly, they still have it in theaters, um, my local theater. So I'm going to see it. Hopefully, hopefully, it'll still be around. Hopefully, for another couple of weeks. Right, yeah, and maybe if someone says they identify as a frog, you should not be t- pandering to them. Just, yeah. just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, ready to move on? Yeah, the, the frog, the frog pronoun was a big, was a new thing for like a couple months back during the summer. I'm like, what is this? I just chose on? that. I just chose that at random. I didn't know that was an actual thing. Yeah, she wants to be called a frog on on a TikTok, I believe. Some young twenty something year old, twenty year old. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's going to be a weird world in the next 20 years. You know what? We've been on it for 2,000 years, God. Just just end it now. <laughs> and it's a heels versus baby face. If you ever hear this conversation or hears this recording or, or podcast, you know, you, you're, you're right about that. It, it, it's a different... We're going through a deprogramming, guys. So to those who are over, 30 and over, welcome to the deprogramming of our life, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I'm 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 sorry. I I think all hope for humanity is lost. Um, <laughs> you know, never give up. Never give up. Change triple J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but again, I'll I'll say the point. If someone says they identify as a frog or a flower or a deaf Eskimo or whatever, they're not right in the head. Why would you pander to them? <laughs> Ready to move on? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Next, we only got a couple more stories left. Yep. Natara joins Mortal Kombat 1 roster voiced by Megan Fox. 